So we're doing CP angle and temporal bone, and we're working in this area here at 7 and 8. This afternoon, we'll come back to this down around the condyles at 9, 10, and 11, and you see 12 here in front of 11. Um, there are a, a lot of talk about approaching cerebellar peduncles today, and uh, here is fourth ventricle, and what part of the peduncular mass makes up the part of the peduncle that faces the fourth ventricle? If you're dealing with cavernoma in this medial part of the peduncular mass that faces the fourth, all of that is made up of superior, or what peduncle is this? Inferior. So for lesions in superior or inferior peduncle, we commonly come through the lateral recess or fourth. For a lesion in the middle cerebellar peduncle that is lateral facing the cisterns, we commonly come in retrosigmoid from lateral, and this is flocculus. I used to be able to ask a thousand surgeons in a meeting what that was, and not a single person who had looked in the CP angle dozens of times really looked at the flocculus, but it's an important landmark in CP angle. And we build this on this complex on three arteries, SCA, ICA, PICA. And we talked about that bone flap that we turn, and here's transverse sigmoid sinus. Here's the asterion right here, and it usually sets over the junction of the transverse and sigmoid usually over the lower half of that junction, and the burr hole that we make is usually just a little medial and below, just behind the occipital mastoid suture that runs down, and then eventually crosses below the sigmoid sinus. So this is upper complex, SCA encircling midbrain, it dips into this fissure and supplies this tent-shaped surface that has the firmus at the upper side of it. And these arteries, as they come around the SCA, they dip into this cerebellar midbrain fissure where it has a series of hairpin turns. It's intertwined with the fourth nerve. And then it sends its branches down the superior peduncles and the dentate nucleus, the most common site of cerebellar hemorrhage. Here we've opened up the lingula of the vermis and the superior medullary velum. And what is this? Facial colliculus. And what is this bulging up from below? This is nodule bulging up with inferior medullary velum and tela in which the plexus arises stretched around it. And if we open up a little bit more lateral to the nodule, you're seeing through the inferior medullary velum. That is the cranial pole of the tonsils. The flocculus and the nodule are connected. What connects them? the inferior medullary velum, to complete that primitive flocculonodular lobe of the cerebellum. So this is flocculonodular lobe connected by the paper-thin velum. And often you see the cranial loop of the pica looping up between the velum and the tonsil in what we call the telo velo tonsillar cleft around the cranial pole of the tonsil. So, and 
the SCA arises at midbrain level, it passes below three and four, above five, and with age, it often loops downward. It arises usually as a main trunk that divides into a rostral trunk to the vermis, a caudal trunk to the hemisphere, and any of these trunks can compress the trigeminal nerve here right adjacent the brain stem. That's the most common finding in a vascular decompression operation for trigeminal neuralgia. And when you sacrifice the superior petrosal veins or the tributaries to get to the trigeminal nerve, when you do the lateral infratentorial approach coming adjacent the superior petrosal sinus, always be careful to dissect out any trunks of superior cerebellar artery that may be uh, involved in the arachnoid binding the artery to the veins. Uh, I think a number of cases that are called venous infarction from taking the veins are actually arterial infarction from taking a trunk of the SCA. So be very careful in sacrificing these veins. Uh, here we come down now, we're looking at the CP angle here, where the petrosal surface folds around the lateral margin of the pons. And here we see seven arising at the lateral end of the sulcus between the pons and medulla, and slightly above the choroid plexus and flocculus hanging out lushka and if you draw a line along, down along the origin of 9, 10, 11, and project that line up two or three millimeters, that's where seven enters the brain stem at the lateral end of the sulcus between the pons and medulla. And here we see 12 on the front of the <coughs> olive, and 9, 10, 11 arising on the back of the olive. We see six arises in the medial part of the pontal medullary sulcus and five arises at mid pontine level. So here's just CP angle, Lushka, seven, eight, 9, 10, 11, you draw a line along the origin of these rutlets, go up two or three millimeters, and that's where seven enters the brain stem in front of eight. And for the infraflocular approach, you come in this direction behind nine, you look up, and you see seven here, as the view makes it look like it's below eight, but it's really in front of eight. And just Ica arises at pontine level, passes by what nerve? Six, then seven, then eight, uh, and then it dip, dips into this cleft that we call the cerebellum pontine fissure or angle. In the base of that cleft is the middle cerebellar peduncle, and then it supplies the surface that faces the back of the temporal bone. And here's what happens in trigeminal neuralgia. Normally, early in life, this SCA arises at midbrain level and encircles the lower midbrain, but with age, this artery loops downward and in trigeminal neuralgia, we find it, often find it sitting here on top of the trigeminal nerve or loop down into the axilla of the trigeminal nerve. Here's seven and eight, the ica's here. And here's what can happen in hemifacial spasm. Here's seven, eight, choroid plexus, Flocculus, you could have an ICA 
loop down here next to seven at the junction with the brain stem, or in about half the cases, the pica will loop upward under seven and eight, and then it'll pass downward and it then passes dorsally someplace between nine and the rootlets of 11. It could be past dorsal. Here it looks like it's below between 10 and 11 that it passes then dorsally to the nerves, but uh, it could be any place between nine and 11. Uh, just looking at porous, we see seven, eight, we see subarcuate artery, labyrinthine artery, facial nerve in the infraflocular position, Lushka. We drill off the meatus. To drill off the meatus, you usually have to sacrifice the subarcuate artery, but it ends blindly in bone. In about half the cases, the ICA will loop into the porous. And here we've opened the 